Hey guys, Ivan here, and I gotta start this video with a freaking physique update of Chris Bumstead at two weeks out of Mr. Olympia, and this is looking absolutely freaking insane. First of all, it's so crazy how much this guy grows into the show. Like, majority of the bodybuilders keep getting leaner, more shredded as the show approaches, but Chris... He does get leaner and more shredded, but he also keeps getting bigger and fuller. And at this point, two weeks out, he looks like a really good open bodybuilder. And like that's the second thought that I had here after I thought how much he keeps growing into the show. The other thought was he needs to do an open show, man. Look at this freaking guy. Look at this most muscular. Most muscular and front lat spread are some of his best poses. And he can't do them in the classic physique. So he should do the open and actually do all the poses. And I would love to see that happen. And now, after seeing how big he actually is at two weeks out with his conditioning, he most certainly could do really good, could do some serious damage in literally any open pro show. Now, in my previous video, I talked about him, you know, losing this year's Mr. Olympia to somebody like Urs Kalicinski. And... Uh, Right now, I gotta say, that's not happening. Unless, God forbid, he, he suffers like a really bad injury in the next two weeks. If everything goes smoothly, uh, he is winning that Olympia title really freaking easily. Now, because of all the injuries that have accumulated over the past couple of years, and with his autoimmune system disease and like him being so successful, I don't think he's gonna be competing for much longer. We don't know, like he never knows, but I feel like this is gonna be his last year. And if that is the case, then he should just continue the prep and, you know, do the Arnold. To the Open and end the career like that. Now, how well would he do in the Open division at the Arnold? Could he be in that top 5? Well, if he really tries hard, if he does a proper rebound after the Mr. Olympia, and he really tries, like he really, you know, he pushes the food and, and the gear a little bit and stuff like that, and he really keeps prepping hard and he does the Arnold, where is the limit? Where is the limit of this guy? Could he win the Arnold Classic? In the open division, I mean, I don't know, I, I have no idea really, but when I'm looking at this photo and like some others as well, I wouldn't be too surprised, because this looks really freaking impressive, this looks just as impressive as let's say Andrew Jack in the most muscular, like it doesn't look much worse, so if Andrew can place third, then yeah, I could see Chris win. It's not impossible, especially if he has a full-blown rebound after the Mr. Olympia and he really tries to get as big as possible. I don't even need to talk about whether he's gonna win the classic physique Mr. Olympia. I think that's, that's definitely not a conversation here. That's gonna be a really easy, super easy win for him. Uh, the comment here that his coach Hunter Rambut made was interesting. He says, time to take advantage of those two extra pounds. And yeah, classic physique guys can weigh more, those shorter guys can weigh up to 7 pounds more, but the taller guys like Chris can only weigh 2 pounds more. Is that gonna help him? Is he gonna be bigger this year? I think so, I mean 2 pounds is not that much, but he barely made the weight last year. So if this year he doesn't have to suffer to make the weight, I'm expecting him to be fresher, fuller, just overall bigger and more impressive. And if he looks like this at two weeks out, and you guys know that he keeps changing rapidly in the last three, four weeks, then in two weeks' time, he's gonna look that much more impressive, and he's not gonna get smaller. He is not only gonna keep losing water and fat from this point, he will do that, but he will also improve. I'm sure he will improve his hardness, his fullness. I'm sure the last physique update that he makes before the Mr. Olympia he's gonna look bigger and more impressive than this. Can you imagine that? And then, can you imagine if he actually stayed on gear and stayed in focus and really focused on rebounding and actually making more progress, more growth, and actually doing the Open at the Arnold? Like, that would be really freaking interesting. That would be, I don't know, that would be a hell of a package. And I think the world deserves to see that. 
Now, in the, in the classic physique, the Mr. Olympia, he's gonna dominate as long as he wants, you know. It's gonna be easy, but what we wanna see right now, what would be so much more fun, is him actually quitting classic physique and focusing on growing even more and doing the open bodybuilding. That would be really amazing and I don't know. I don't know where is the limit of this guy. I mean, I don't know if I can see him winning the Mr. Olympia title not anytime soon. But Arnold Classic, top three or a victory, oh man, it's not impossible. It's not impossible, if you ask me. I know it sounds crazy, but looking at his physique, I don't see where is the limit. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. The next news is not as exciting. It's devastating, actually, for Nathan Diasha and for us fans of him. So he was denied the access to the US. Really, unfortunately, we will not see this guy on the Mr. Olympia stage. It seemed like he was gonna finally do it. I made a video about this yesterday. It seemed like he was gonna be allowed, that he was gonna actually be able to travel, but apparently he was denied the visa, and he is really broken up about it. Uh, you can play this video or read the caption, and you will see, like, he is devastated. And he actually asks people not to leave any nasty comments in the comment section. He asked that in the video and in the caption. And then eventually he removed the comment section. Because he, he is that sensitive right now. He's really emotional. He really felt, he really thought that um, he had it. He had all the paperwork. He was qualified for the Mr. Olympia. He thought that this was going to be the year when he comes back to the big stage. But apparently, unfortunately, it's not gonna happen. It's really not fair for these bodybuilders to sacrifice so much, to really try hard, to qualify for the Mr. Olympia and then in the end not be able to travel there to compete. So maybe the location of Mr. Olympia should be elsewhere. I mean, Nathan Diasha is definitely, in my opinion, a top 10 Mr. Olympia material. Uh, he is not, you know, a threat to the title or the top 5, but the top 10 material for sure. And, uh, you know, maybe even higher than 10th, but probably somewhere around there. And there are so many guys who can be top 10, who are gonna really battle hard to get in that top 10. And uh, Nathan is gonna leave one spot free. And I seriously believe that he would be in that top 10, but yeah, unfortunately... It's not happening. Really bad news for bodybuilding for Mr. Olympia, but it is how it is. Maybe he will figure it out somehow. He asks for help, but there are only two more weeks left. So yeah, I don't think it's going to happen. But if it happens, it will be awesome. Unfortunately, right now, as far as we know, we won't get to see Nathan Diasha compared to the top bodybuilders in the world. And here is one of those competitors that will most likely take that Nathan Diasha spot. I mean, Michael Krejci, in my opinion, are going to be in that top 10. How high can he place? I think even higher than 10th. I could see this guy in the top 8, maybe even top 6, if he's a little bit lucky. But, like, most likely, top 10, best case scenario, top 8, something like that. We'll see. But right now, at this point, two weeks out, he looks good. Like, he looks really good. And in these two weeks, I'm sure he's going to get even more shredded, even more impressive. And in my opinion, I feel like this guy has, like, all the tools necessary to be one of the top guys. The very, very top guys. You know, like, top three or something. As far as, like, improvements, muscularity-wise, the only thing that is lacking behind that could be bigger are his glutes. And you guys know that. As far as everything else, I mean, everything else is either freaking crazy impressive or really good. <laughs> I mean, everything is just spot on, like chest, shoulders, arms, back is also very good, quads are good from the front, hamstrings are very separated, he now figured out the conditioning as well, his posing is improving. I also believe he will be better on the Mr. Olympia stage than he was here at the Ampro Cup. So, yeah, I'm expecting a better version of Michael Krizio, and that version, you know, can be, in my opinion, he's top 10 for sure. But maybe even higher, maybe like 8th, 7th, maybe even 6th, I don't know. Can he beat Andrew Jacked? It's not impossible. It's not likely, but it's not impossible. So, like, my prediction for Krizio, and I like this guy, I want to see him do well. So, I would say he's going to play 7th this year at the Mr. Olympia. 
What do you guys think? Tell me down below in the comment section. Whatever is on your mind, let me know. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up for more stuff like this, for more videos. Subscribe to this channel, guys. And if you want to support me, there is the link down below. And if you buy any of the old school lab supplements and use code Ivan, you get a 15% discount and I get something from it as well. So thank you guys so much. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.